Hello everyone. Welcome to our midweek meditation. Today we'll talk about uh, the danger of idolatry. 1 John 5.21 says, Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your hearts. In the New English Bible, translate these words as follows. My children, be on the watch against false gods. Keep yourself from idols, false gods. Anything and everything that would occupy the place of God in your heart, this is an idol. That is the definition of idol. Anything that takes place the of God in your heart. Modern idols and old idols. An idol may be defined as anything that comes between the soul of a person and the true God. That which a person puts first place in his life as his object of worship. When the true God does not have first place, we cannot escape from the truth that we become an idol worshiper. Modern day idol worshippers do not bow down before stone images. They are too refined and cultured for that. But if you have made God out of your success, instead of desiring to be a saint of God, some of us hunger for the privilege of being a successful person so that we can enjoy all the gadgets that society can offer. Success is defined in terms of material values and possession. Then that becomes our idol. If you have made a god out of society, for example, you aspire for the approval and acceptance by the group supreme the group of people that become supreme important to you are the decision that you des that you determine your destiny made on your understanding of the will of god and not on the basis of what the crowd wants to do at the present if you have made a god out of science for example, some says that only ignorant and lazy people will look to God for help. These people believe that modern men can solve his own problem and answer his own questions. However, in the final analysis, science provides us only with tools with which the mind can work. We need to let God tell us how to use these tools. Unless human minds are ruled by the Spirit of God, we may destroy ourselves with the discoveries of science. There are substitute gods which cannot meet the deepest needs of our lives. Substitute gods are poor substitute for the real thing. Substitute gods are helpless in our times of deepest needs. Substitute gods will always disappoint in times of need. Substitute God usurp the place that belongs to the true God. Therefore, let us worship the true Lord and God only. In the book of John, the passage we have read, he was encouraging his reader to beware of the perils of letting anyone usurp the place that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ, who alone is worthy of our genuine worship. Christ alone can be dependent on all times and under all circumstances. In John 10, 28, Jesus said, I give them eternal life. They will never perish, and no one can snatch them away from my hands. Christ alone is worthy of the supreme love and loyalty of the believer's heart. 
First John 4.9 says, God showed his how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. Verse 10, this is real love that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his only son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Their Christ alone is the Messiah, the Savior who can save us from our sin. He died on the cross to pay the penalty of our sin. He rose from the grave and offered forgiveness and eternal life for those who believe in him. Thirdly, or fourthly, Christ alone is the healer of our body and our soul. In Matthew 16 to verse 17 in the New Living Translation, says that evening when many possessed people were brought to Jesus, he cast out the evil spirits with a simple command, and he healed all those who were sick. This fulfilled the word of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah, who said, He took our sicknesses and removed our diseases. In Matthew 15, verse 29 to 31, Jesus returned to the Sea of Galilee and climbed to a hill and sat down. A vast crowd brought to him people who were lame, blind, crippled, those who could not speak, and many others. They laid them before Jesus, and he healed them all. The crowd was amazed. Those who hadn't been able to speak were speaking. The crippled were made well. The lames were walking, and the blind could see again. And they praised the God of Israel. Jesus can heal your soul, and he can heal your body. Christ alone is the living Lord who deserves our supreme love and loyalty above all country, about country, above family, and above occupation. Beware of worshiping a substitute God. All substitute gods are false gods. The sins of Israel was the sin of idolatry. They let the false god take the place of the true god. And so God punished them. Let us learn from their mistake and don't follow their example. If God punishes his own chosen people because of idolatry, let us turn away from our own idolatry and turn to God. Believe and accept Jesus as your personal Savior. He provides salvation of your soul and healing of your body. This is very important nowadays with this pandemic COVID-19 that the world is suffering from. Maybe God is reminding the people of the world. Maybe God is reminding you and me that we have forgotten him. And instead, we have worshipped so many other things in our lives. Think about it. My friends, May this short meditation steer in our heart's desire to come to Jesus. In the word of the Second Chronicles 7.14 says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. And so, maybe God is pursuing you because of this COVID-19. Maybe you have forgotten God. Maybe you have turned away from God. Maybe your idols, your success becomes your idols. Maybe you're worshiping other things other than the true and the living God. Let us repent of this sin and come to God and be healed of this sickness that is prevailing in the world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we believe that you are the true and the living God. 
We believe that you are all powerful, all faithful God. We believe that nothing is hidden from you. You have created everything for the purpose of making the people understand that we need you. We are your creation and you love us so much. And you send your only begotten son. So that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Father God, the people are apprehensive. The people of Samoan are fearful because now we have two positive identified person who is in who was infected with COVID-19. We do not know where they have gone. We do not know the people they have come in contact. What we just declare that it will not spread, the virus will not spread to more people in the city of Sambuanga. We declare God that you are sovereign and we ask for your mercy and your grace be upon our city be upon our leaders forgive our idolatrous practices and heal Sambuanga Lord we thank you because we can depend upon you you have commanded us that whatever we ask and pray believe and you are going to answer us positively so we thank you with this assurance oh God that we, your children, will continue to pray for the healing of the sick people of Sambuanga and even the whole nation and even the whole world. We ask, O Lord, inasmuch as you are the owner, give wisdom to the people who are studying in order to help them determine, find out, come up with the correct formula as an antidote to coronavirus. So we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good day, everyone.